let me do this. Let me do this. Let me talk a little bit about uh, this process and financial freedom. Okay, I, I, that would be a good discussion to have, but I'm going to lay some groundwork first for you. Okay. To me, to me, to get financial freedom, or a, another way to say it, do well in business, make money, and so on, um, has has two essential parts to it. One of those is the how do you do it? Okay, how do you find a product you want to sell? For example, how do you promote yourself? How do you sell it? How do you? I mean, there's accounting things that go into it, maybe, and some legal things, and that, that's all the how to do it stuff okay there are thousands of books out there about how to do that and so i don't get involved in it the other part of it which we do get involved in which is important in this conversation is the emotional freedom that we need to pursue it to pursue money, finances, wealth, and that kind of thing. All right. And to me, in my experience, you can read all the how-to books in the world. But if your emotional stuff says, no, no, don't go there, it won't matter. <laughs> okay. You need to have that freed up. And that's what we're talking about, correct? Yes. All right. So what often happens and just about, I don't want to say everybody, but many, 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 many people have this kind of thing. They grow up and they develop some beliefs about money. Beliefs like, that aren't good for the financial freedom. Beliefs like uh, rich people are greedy. In order to get rich, I have to step on somebody else. I have to lie, cheat, and steal. Uh, it's not spiritual to be wealthy, that kind of thing. Okay. Now, let me ask you, I just mentioned a few things. In your upbringing, was any of that in there? Yeah, rich is not good. Uh... Um, it was a socialist er area time. I raised in Russia. So at the time in the 80s, it was still not very open to be rich, even though people been more and more making money. But in the environment that I was in, uh, on my mother's side, she wasn't very, she was very conservative and the uh, riches was not. She was, what I'm trying to say is, uh, she was asking, uh, she, what I got out of her, basically, don't be flashy, uh, don't stand out, you okay. know, save your money for black days, something like that, stuff like that. I'm making notes here, hold on a second. All right. Okay, so now I have to guess a little bit here. Uh, a stand because I don't know enough about you, uh, you know, to be accurate in what I'm saying. So you need to correct me where necessary. Okay. But I think I'm hearing behind your mother saying these things is that there's some penalty. Maybe you're not aware of it or not, but some, maybe even a hidden penalty if you are flashy if you stand out if you make a lot of money if, if, if you do that she's not going to love you if you do that you'll be a social outcast if you do that god won't love you i, I i'm making it up but how am i doing uh, yeah yeah it's true it's like it, it's not okay to i don't i know it's not okay to stand out in the way it's not okay to have a lot of money in a way, okay. yeah, yeah, way, yeah. Okay. Now, do I understand correctly that, that you got that kind of a input uh, very young, from your culture, for one thing, the Russian culture, and from your mother, and as a young boy, you just developed 
it's not okay to make a lot of money. Right. All right. Yeah. And and let me get back to the penalty thing for a minute. Suppose you were in Russia and you did make a lot of money. What would the penalty be as far as you're concerned? The way she told me, uh, someone gonna complain to a police will come over and arrest you. Okay, so if you made a lot of money, somebody in the neighborhood or someplace would complain, the police would come to see you. Uh, okay, well, that's a pretty good sized penalty. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. now, what's happening here, and I think it's good, Stan, is you are laughing at it because it seems silly looking back at it. Am I correct? <laughs> yeah. All right. Very important thing here. So let me address this. Logically, this is the way how I see it. Now you correct me, okay? Logically, it's fine to make all the money you want. You're America and that's what you do and da, 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 all that stuff, right? Yeah. Emotionally, uh-uh. <laughs> Am I right? Yes, yes, correct. Okay. Now, the emotional stuff is stuff you got when you were a young child, all right? Growing up in a culture that mm, money, no, not so much, and a mother, and no, 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 all that. And until you resolve those beliefs emotionally, they're going to keep replaying and they're going to literally stop you from making financial decisions that brings more wealth. I want to make sure that. That no, you no, are... I, no, I agree with you. I understand that, yes. Okay, all right. So what we need to do, and it's going to be a process, Stan, but what we need to do is to start looking at the specific events in your life um, that are emotionally charged that develop those beliefs, okay? We're going to bring in an unseen therapist about those and have her then um, help give you some resolution on it. Now, what I can do here is to help you with one of those to get you started, okay? It would be a series, but you have, a, you have our whole course and the advanced materials and stuff you can get into yeah. you know, to, go, to go as far as you want on that. But I do wanna give you this one beginning start, okay? So what we want to do is go back and look for a specific event in your life. And the further back we go, Stan, the better. Where your mother or somebody said something to you and you really believed it, okay, uh, how, about money. It's not okay to stand out or, or the police are going to come and get you or something like that. Have you identified one of those, a specific event like that? Uh, yeah, one of them, it's going to be, uh, let's say, five or six. My mom was telling me that uh, her father-in-law was telling his wife, my grandma, that before he went to jail, uh, she, he wants them to work from paycheck to paycheck. Well, I didn't hear that. He wants them to what? To work. He wants them to work from paycheck to paycheck. To, from pages to pages? paycheck. No, 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 paycheck. Oh, paycheck to paycheck. Oh, okay. All right. So, okay, now say that to me. You, um, I'd lost the track of who said what to who. It was your father and I. I, I, I missed no, that. No, my, my, my grandpa was telling to my mother. No, no, my grandpa was telling to my grandma before he left to a jail to raise them to, to the level that would be able to work from paycheck to paycheck. And his rationale was he used to be a manager of a jewelry store and somehow, and he was making good money and somehow it got him to trouble. So he, he asked his wife, my grandma, to, give them, to get them a profession that will get them from paycheck to paycheck. Okay. So, and, and you're present in this, in this conversation, you're hearing this conversation? No, my mother told me. 
your mother told you about this. Okay. Now, what's going to be important about this is when your mother tells you this, this is what's really important in the whole thing, okay? It isn't so much what she said or what your grandfather said to your grandmother about the paycheck to paycheck. The really important thing is what you at age five or six, how you respond or what did you say to your, oh, that's a fearful thing. Oh, uh, I always need to be in poverty. What did you, if you can recall, what was your emotional response when your mother told you that? I feel like I'm shrinking. I feel like I'm afraid. Okay, and you would be afraid of what? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I just feel afraid. I feel intimidated. Maybe out of the money. Afraid to make. Am I afraid to disobey my grandfather warned, my grandfather request? Um, well, you're five or six at this, at this age. Are you somehow, as far as you can remember, I know it's a long time ago, okay? So we'll just do our best here, but, but um, are you somehow at that age uh, thinking it's your responsibility? To make more money or less? What do you mean? Somehow your responsibility that you can at least make paycheck to paycheck or the family can live paycheck to paycheck. Mm, I won't say no to it. I, I want to say no. I'm not sure. Okay. All right. Well, it's not. Okay. I was just exploring because I always want to explore and see what's, mm -hmm. what's possible there. But somehow or other, this you're hearing about the paycheck to paycheck comment. You are afraid, yeah. and we're not able, because it's been so long ago, so far anyway, to be able to pinpoint what the fear is about. Right. Okay. Now, when here, close your eyes for the moment for me. I, we need to do a little testing. Right? Go back to that moment. There you is your mother telling you the paycheck to paycheck thing, and there you... Tell me now, as you get into it, as you get into it, on a scale of zero to 10, how intense is your emotional response now as you remember it? I want to cry. Um, I don't know why I feel sad. I don't know, when I close my eyes, I just see a huge house that my grandma used to live at. A, a huge, uh, a, wait a minute, a huge heart house, house, house. a big okay. house, yeah, 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 yeah. But it's more as a sadness now than, than anything else. I'm sad. I, I know. Is this? I'm sad because she's uh, unintentionally misleading. I don't want to say lying, but maybe it. it uh, anyway, maybe it was her belief that I just took it on myself? Well, okay. What's Im Let me get back here for a second. What's important for what we're about to do? We're gonna bring an unseen therapist in a bit, okay? What's important there is how you feel currently as you look back at it. We're not gonna be able to change any of the details, who said what to whom, or the Russian culture or anything like that, okay? It's your response that we wanna shift. That we can do, okay? But we need to do it properly. Right. And we'll do it with this specific event. You need to do it with some other specific events. And then after a while, this starts to clear and you begin to get freer financially because you are logically free, but not emotionally free, okay? So we're gonna, do the emotional free things a piece at a time. Okay. Now, so give me, estimate for me on a scale of zero to 10, as a moment ago, as you were getting into it, I saw your face you know, do it like that. Um, on a scale of zero to 10, what intensity was that? Was it a three, a five, an eight, a nine, what? I'll go for nine. All right. And again, I want to get to the sadness. It's um, sadness. Why would your mother tell you that 
Um, be more specific if you can. Yeah, why would she would tell the five or six years old anything like that? It's like it's like feels like she she's putting me in a box or, or like uh, a trap in a way. Okay. Well, let me let me for the moment, and, and again, remember, I'm I'm guessing, you know, to give ideas, so always correct and everything. But I'm going to put myself in your mother's mother's shoes. Now, I've never been in Russia. I'm not your mother. I don't know her. Uh, but I have been having a conversation like this before. So let me lean on that kind of thing for a bit. So I'm trying to put myself in your mother's shoes. Now, your mother, obviously older than you, more experienced than you. She's been raised in the Russian culture and all of its limitations on money and the beliefs around it. I'm going to guess for the moment that that she's trying to, with not only this comment, but other comments, make sure you understand your place in this world. Otherwise you will stand out, the police will come and get you, or you know, it's a way to keep you safe. Uh, would, I, would I be accurate there? Yeah. Okay. So we can understand why your mother was saying it. It may not be the best thing to say, and we're not excusing necessarily what she says or the behavior, but we are trying to understand it and there's a difference. Are you, are you with me? Yeah. Okay. Now, the only reason I say that is because when we, get, when we bring unseen therapists in, we wanna put as much on the table as we can about this. Because if we're, if we're hiding stuff or forgetting stuff and it's under the table. She's not going to bother with that because that's that's your right to have and hide or repress or whatever you want. It's your right to do, and it's a very unloving thing to take that away unless you're willing to put it on top of the table. Okay. So with this understanding, we move more towards. Okay, that's what mother was giving me at the time. And that's what I, Stan, was believing in. I had no choice. I'd be right there, would I not? Yes. Okay. I mean, you're surrounded by the Russian culture and your whole family and all these beliefs and everything else. And you're still carrying them around in America. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. With that in mind. Uh, let's do a little unseen therapist session. We'll make it really easy because I'll just narrate the whole thing for you. Okay. All you do is follow along and let's just see what happens. Okay. Sure. All right. So if you would stand, just close your eyes and take a nice, deep, relaxing breath. Now, as a, as a simple way of inviting the unseen therapist, just recall some loving moment in your life. Doesn't have to be a grand thing, a dog looking you in the face or something with a child or a lover or just a loving moment. And whenever you're there, just nod your head. All right, good. All that is, by the way, um, is the unseen therapist uh, or, or that's, that's you doing your best to align yourself with the pure love of the unseen therapist. That's all that is, okay? You and I aren't there in all this pure, magnificent love of the unseen therapist, but she is, and she can help us, and she can bring this love into this emotionally laden specific event. So now let's just shift for the moment to your age five or six. And let's, let's look at this through your adult eyes now as you're looking back at it. And there's young you. You're being told by your mother, you know, about this paycheck to paycheck idea from your grandfather. And by the way, he's going to jail and there's a bunch of negative stuff about all of that anyway. And she tells you this. And you feel very... 
currently looking back at it, feel very sad about that. And maybe you're even st feeling, st still feeling somewhat afraid because that's how you depicted what you were feeling at the time back then. So you have this emotional response to it. And because of our earlier conversations, Stan, we recognize that emotionally you have this response, but logically uh, doesn't need to really be. We need to somehow or other resolve this so you're still not carrying it around. We need to release it, relieve it, and this kind of thing. So we're going to hand that to the unseen therapist and see what happens. So if you would, let's just represent these emotional responses to this paycheck to paycheck statement as a unwanted vibration around your heart. Ta-ta, 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 ta-ta. Now we're not asking you to actually make your heart vibrate. It's an imaginary thing. It's a metaphor. So unseen therapist sees this. She sees it with a very understanding light, with a lot more wisdom, certainly you would have at age five or six, and more than you and I would have even at this older age. She sees it with compassion. She sees it with understanding. She knows that mother was likely trying to do her best in your behalf, and maybe not anywhere near aware of the impact that it would that that and other statements would have on you. So unseen therapist in your imagination then sends a loving, cooling, healing breeze, gentle little breeze towards you. It enters your system, it surrounds this imaginary unwanted vibration around your heart, this sadness, this afraid emotion, and begins to calm it down. It goes, the heart, the unwanted vibration goes in your imagination. Sorry. In your imagination goes, ta-ta, 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 ta-ta. Now, Let's do that again. There you are, age five or six, you're being told the, the paycheck thing. You're looking at it through the adult eyes now. You can see the belief, the emotional response, the sadness, maybe, the, maybe some fear. Ta-ta, 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 ta-ta. Here comes the cooling breeze. Ta-ta, 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 ta-ta. And so while staying just I would point out sometimes we tend to flit off into other events, but for the moment, stay on this particular event and take your time and do it again in your mind. And then again, and maybe again, if you want to, et cetera, here's all this emotional response, ta-ta, 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 the cooling breeze, ta-ta, 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 ta-ta. And just keep doing that until you fit, you somehow or other say, well, that's as far as I can go. And by the way, there are no grades for this. We're just going to do it and then talk about it. Mm -hmm. So I'll wait quietly while you do that. And whenever you're done, just open your eyes and we'll talk. Okay. All right. So let me ask you, Stan, did you have a, I mean, were you able to follow along well, or did you have a lot of competing thoughts or what went on? Uh, towards the end, I was following well. In the beginning, it was unrelated events. Un everyday, everyday problem. Everyday problem, like everyday now as an adult? Yeah, I need to fix my car. This is what gets <laughs> with You have to fix your car? Yes. Okay, so, so your mind flipped over there. But then after a while, you were able to follow along? Yes. Okay, all right. Well, 
don't feel alone. People flip all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> Our egos have this chatter, 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 always going on. You know? um, did you feel anything during that process? Not that you have to. I just want to know if you did. For some reason, I felt more fear from my mother. But I, f I feel a little bit more calmer. Wait a minute. You, you had more fear for your mother? No, I, I did see it, but she was afraid of something. Oh, okay. All right. Right, yeah. All right. But what we're looking at now, yep, yeah, and that may well be, yes. In fact, maybe we talked about it when she was trying to protect you in her own way yes. to make sure that you understood where your place was in life and all of that. Okay. And maybe she was afraid because grandfather's going to jail. Could be. Okay. Yes. Um, but what we want to get to really is your response to it. That's always the important part of it here. So you said you felt calmer. Yeah, I feel calmer. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not sad. Well, do this. Do this for me, Stan. Mm -hmm. We always need to test these things. It's not just. We want. Okay. We started off with. A nine, that was your estimate, a nine when you went through it. So now close your eyes, close your eyes, run, run that movie again uh, and see if you're still a nine or maybe more or less or whatever. Hold on a second. I didn't hear it. No, it's actually 10, but it's anger and it's anger towards my... It's, it's, it's like a wall. It's like a black wall, like a cloud. All right. Now, even it's anger, or it's maybe it's even a rage. Or even rage. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's stop there for a second. Let me play teacher for a moment. Okay. Um, what we addressed, what we put on the table for unseen therapist was sadness and maybe some fear. That's what we put on the table, right? Now, that was a nine before we began. I, have, I remember that correctly? Yes. Okay. So now we go through it and what you're telling me is you're a 10 and it's angry, you're really mad, it's even close to rage, yes, okay? Anger is a different emotion than sadness or fear. Do you hear that? Yes. Okay, so what you did, and many people do that. It's one of the more sophisticated things that people need to understand about how the EFT process works, is you switched aspects. And in your advanced course, that's lesson number three, if you wanna go back and review that, okay? You switched, you switched from the sadness, maybe fear thing, or yeah, fast, that is maybe fear, to anger, all right? Now, what we want to really test, what we want to test is how we did with the sadness and the fear. So let me ask you now, if you can, just do your best here, okay? Close your eyes, go back to that event now and stay only on the sadness, maybe the fear issue. Stay only on that and tell me on a scale of zero to 10, if that's still a nine or some other number. The sadness is zero. Um, the fear, uh, maybe one is. Okay, so it's diminished way, way down is what you're telling me. Yes. Okay, but you shifted over to anger. Yes. Okay, now let me ask you, when you shift to anger, and I have to guess again here because I don't know what you do inside your head. So you correct me again. When you shift to anger, are you shifting to anger about that particular incident or is it anger about a whole series of things that went on in your life? Most likely the series of things would happen in my life. Okay, all right. Okay, so now 
let's uh, let's sort of summarize here for a moment because I want I'm going to give you a, a path to go down from here. Okay. We started off with a concern about financial freedom. Okay. We had a discussion about ah, oh, you know, early on in your life, you were given a whole bunch of beliefs which you quite naturally bought into culture wise your mother and and so on the paycheck to, and the paycheck to paycheck specific event was one contributor to that okay now we worked on that one contributor and it's from a from its original place it went from a nine to a zero or one way down yes yes okay so that impact on you that contributor to your financial limitations, your emotional financial limitations, we did something important with. Now, what you'll want to do, and we're recording this for you so you can go back over all these instructions, okay? What you're going to want to do is tomorrow morning, you're going to want to test that again, but stay on what we worked on, which is the sadness and so on, okay? And see see what's there now you may well get the anger again okay that wouldn't surprise me okay but you may get some other emotion you may get some other piece of that event maybe somebody else said something you forgot about now you remember it okay M maybe you're having a discussion with one of your friends afterwards and then something happened and you remember that okay these are all aspects other pieces and you need to do this thoroughly to get it really done well okay Now, I'm going to back up one second. I'm going to give you another piece to all of this, which is also in your advanced course, but it's, it's called the tabletop and table legs. Do you ever, do you remember that item? Yes. Okay. Well, let me go over just for a moment, just so we're, so we're clear here. This would be a tabletop and it's supported by table legs. Okay. Remove the table legs, the tabletop falls. Okay. Now the tabletop here for our purposes is I have limits to my financial freedom. That's the tabletop. It has lots of table legs under it, which are the specific events, like the paycheck to paycheck mm -hmm. specific event. Okay. Now we probably did something with that. That's one guy, but there's more. There's more there. So the, the financial limitation doesn't leave until we've dealt with more of the specific events that underlie that. Other things mother may have said, other things your friends said, other things you learned from the culture, specific events, specific events, specific events. Then you do those and you only need to do five, 10, 15, 20 of them really, really well and thoroughly because even though there may be hundreds, it, it, if you do them enough, thoroughly enough, it sort of generalizes over all the rest, okay? And you get freer and freer and freer. Thank you.